Alright, welcome to part 7 of the Lantern tutorial. So we're coming along pretty nicely here. And I actually forgot about <laughs> these ones right here. So we're actually just going to delete and delete, uh, delete and delete. And we'll just use these ones we've already made. So just shift, or sorry, not shift, but select one and shift rotate 90 degrees. Copy. W, and let's just move it into place. As if we're lucky, it should fit. So go into your left hand viewport for this one. Alright. Is that how the other ones fit? I feel like the other ones are more flush fit, so let's uh, just cheat a little and scale it just a bit. You know what? Let's actually affect the mesh here. We'll make one side a bit shorter. And then we can line it up. There we go. Perfect. Alright. And let's see. Is that. No, it's got to be out farther. Go in the front viewport. And line it up. Okay. And then shift drag it to the other side. Okay. Whenever you see that kind of happening, where things go away, just hit the save button. And I guess I can turn on this adaptive, what is it called? Or progressive display. What's happening is you're having so much to view that it's uh, having troubles, I guess, especially with recording. And I have a lot of other stuff open too, so. Oh well. Select this. I don't really like it being on. And drag it up. Okay, so this is what happens when you don't, it'll kind of keep going. Um, hold on here, where are the settings for this, let's see. Uh, come on, I know there were settings that I could change. At least in the old Macs, there used to be a way where I could tell it what I wanted to uh, get rid of. So bring this down, or actually bring this up, and what is this, front or left? This is left. So I should bring it to the middle here, like so, and then we'll select one, edit poly, select these, and just raise them to the top. Okay. And then mesh move should be good. So now select the other one, vertex, and just raise it to the top. Okay. There we go. Perspective F3, perfect. So now that we have that done, we can begin working on the designs for these top pieces here. So let's just click one. I'm not really doing this the best of ways. I should have just done one. But okay. Let's isolate selection. So we just have this. Go into edit poly. And let's see, this is a front. And let's actually just turn it to consistent colors for a second here. So what I want to do is create a design in here. Now, we could use booleans, but I think that'll really, really kill us in the long run. So what I'm going to do first is just start with the design. So um, let's see. Let's just split this in half first. So the easy way to find half is just make a line. And okay, this won't work. Never mind. Don't do that. Um, effect pivot only. Centered object. There we go. Now we know the center. So I'm just going to create a line there so I can see. And then let's try to replicate this design right here. It'll be kind of tough, but we'll see if we can do it. 
and you click and drag to get Bezier lines like this. And we can adjust all this later, so I'm just kind of going in and getting a general shape for now. Yeah, that does look pretty horrible, doesn't it? Whoa. That's such a good start, too. And then close spine, yes. Okay. It's not ever a base shape. Let me actually change the color of it so you guys can see it. There we go. Uh, let's edit some of the vertices here. So you should try to make them all Bezier, uh, well, just Beziers. I'll give you two handles for each one. That way we have the best adjustment, I guess. So just start moving them around and positioning the handles until you get kind of a smooth shape. There's really no other way to do it. And your handles are based off your move, so if you're moving in two directions, your handles go in two directions. If not, they only go in one. So let's see here. I'll make that a little sharper. Bring this in. And this will just take a little bit of time, but actually, you know what? We don't. What are these in? These are. You're Bezier Quan. I thought those were. Yeah, that's not what I want. I want Bezier. Okay. This one's just acting kind of funny. And you can always add more segments in if you think you need them. Like here, I'm going to actually refine it a bit. So just do connect, refine, and just add a couple points in. And hope they don't connect themselves. Now, when you hit vertex, you can move them. So it gives you more points to uh, play with. Okay. And you can really make whatever shape you want. You can go online and research uh, different designs if you feel the need. I'm just going to stick with what these people have, though. So let's kind of come around. up, kind of swooping, swooping crane or something, I don't know. Alright, come in here, and let's adjust this. Okay, it's good, come over here, and fix this one. This actually kind of goes in. It's actually looking really good. Better than I thought. Okay. Although, select all these and just kind of bring them over. I feel like it's too long. Okay. Anyway. Uh, carrying on. Actually, let's bring these down a bit. Okay. And bring this one in. Okay, move this. get some nice curves going. Alright, this one... Ok, 
Okay, like so. And let's move this one in here. Like that. That's actually pretty good. And come down. It's not quite the same as the original, but it's uh it's not bad. There we go. So that'll be our basic design that we want. This will just allow us to easily, you know, reference it. So when our mesh smooth thing is happening, we can uh, deal with it. So what we're going to want to do is go into your editable poly here and make a lot of connections. First, though, you're going to want to connect once in the middle. We're going to actually have to just copy this twice to get our shape. And I'm going to actually select this and scale the whole thing up. I think I want my design a bit bigger. Because it covers a pretty good portion of this, this thing. Maybe a bit more in that. There we go. Okay. So, select here, connect. We'll just give it uh, zero pinch and a lot of lines to start off with. Alright, so select one and just start lining them up to critical places. So the edge of lines, the beginning of lines, corners, whatever you can really think of. I'm sure there are many ways to do this, but I'm hoping that my way will work. If not, you'll be the first to know. So I was one short, so edge. Just connect with one and put it right there. Okay. What we can actually do is just delete those because we won't be using them yet. Alright, so now that we have this, let's uh, go to edge and connect. Let's actually count. Three. I don't know, never mind. Let's just kind of go with it. Nine seems like a good number. So, let's see, select these and just scale them down a bit so we can get a good grid to start off with. So I'm just starting from the top and deselecting things I don't need. Okay. Seeing this failing miserably, and I'll probably resort to booleans anyway, but we'll see. All right, um, what can we do here with this one? We should probably put it right there, but let's do this. Okay, and bring this one up a bit. There we go. So now we kind of have this grid where our main pattern is going to go. Now, I'm trying to think how we can do this without really screwing it up. Let's just start adjusting our boxes here. So kind of position them around these lines. Now they're going to be mesh smooth, so it'll be kind of tricky to get this to work. And we're going to have to add a lot of geometry in here. And actually, yeah, this is all the way around. So what you have to make sure you do is uh, select your point. Don't just click on it. Select it. Or draw a box around it. That way you can get the points in the front and the back, because what we're going to end up doing is connecting, or uh, bridging them. And that won't quite work if you don't have them appropriately selected. 
that'll be it for this part. I will see you in the next one.